Hey everybody, so today we are kicking off a mini series for the month and I am going to be interviewing some authors who have recently come out with some books that you all might be interested in. These are not promotional videos. These are books that I have personally read and I thought were really good. And so I wanted to talk to the authors of these books and see what they had to say about the topics that they wrote about. So with all of these videos, I am going to also be doing a giveaway. Make sure you look at the description box down below to understand how to get submitted in for that if you want a free copy of any of the books that we're going to review. And today we are going to be interviewing none other than Heather Hedden, who is on her third edition of The Accidental Taxonomist. If you've not picked this up, you're probably one of the few people that haven't. This is a very well-regarded book. And yes, it says accidental taxonomist, but she also does cover things in general information architecture, ontology, and a little bit of knowledge graph in there. So if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you stick around. I'm a taxonomist and I've been doing I've been doing taxonomy for a long time. I I don't know what to say because then it kind of ages me, but yeah, maybe 27 years <laughs> in, in different roles. I started doing indexing using a taxonomy or control vocabulary at a, a library database vendor at the time called information access company but it's been kind of rolled into gale they, they, people in the library field know it but involved indexing uh, magazine and trade journal articles using a controlled vocabulary which you need when you're having lots of articles and lots of people indexing to keep it consistent and then i moved into the group managing the controlled vocabularies uh, which, um, yeah, no kind of taxonomies. In fact, we put it more into a taxonomy form while I was there, you know, the broader term, narrower term, related term, and the, the synonyms and so forth. And, uh, well, I left that and I got into other roles and including taxonomy consulting. And I realized there was a whole world out there that didn't just have to be for libraries, that they, you know, corporate enterprise, the uh, government agencies, all, everyone who has large amounts of information needs to have it organized and tagged consistently with a taxonomy, which can also display in the user interface, uh, hierarchy trees and facets and so forth. This is who Heather is, but Heather, why the book? Like what made you think like this is a thing that is needed in the world and it's on the third edition. So obviously <laughs> you were right. So, you know, maybe talk about like, where do you think the success comes from? Like what, where is the, the why is this resonating with so many people? Yeah, you know, a lot of people in different ro job roles, not just people who started out with like indexers like me, which is very, very few nowadays, <laughs> um, whether you come to it as a subject matter expert, maybe dealing with uh, digital assets or maybe a, a web user interface, information architecture. Sometimes people have a more technical background. Uh, they're all coming to, you know, they, they they come across this, oh, we need to have terms, we need to have metadata, we need to tag, we need to find things. And how do we do that? <laughs> and, you know, to a certain extent, you can learn and do it yourself, or you can find someone else to do it. But then, you know, reading the book helps you figure that out. As for how I got to write the book in the first place, we have to back up, I was first teaching an online course on how to do taxonomies. This was through Simmons University School of Library and Information Science had a continuing education program at the time. They don't anymore. So I was doing this this uh, uh, six week or a workshop, online workshop. And so I had created content for that. And then I thought, oh, I could make a book out of that. <laughs> I already had a connection with uh, Information Today because they they published books for the American Society for indexing, which mm -hmm, I was involved mm -hmm. in. And I did a little book for them on website indexing, which makes no sense anymore because that was back, <laughs> you know, the A to Z site index yeah. back, back yeah. before we had web content management systems taking care of everything. <laughs> so I had, I had it in with them and we decided that, yeah, I could uh, do this book. And um I went to my first taxonomy boot camp conference in 2007. I, have to, I was speaking, but I also kind of really got into the field of taxonomies mm -hmm. then, listened to other talks, got ideas too, and it expanded it into quite, <laughs> quite the book. So I wrote the first edition during the course of 2009, and it came out in 2010. Um, but then I got more experience as a consultant, mm -hmm. different roles since then. 
so I could add more. And it was successful enough that the publisher asked me to do a second edition. So that came yeah. out in 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, then to my surprise, they asked for a third edition. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the so I I'm almost I'm pretty sure I think I'm cited in the second version of of the book at some point on ontology stuff. But, you know, I I remember you know when I first became because I started life as a taxonomist. Again, yeah. accidentally as as many as many of us uh start out and um at least it was called a taxonomy at the time. You know, I think that's also half of the issue is when you're working, especially in enterprise, um, nowadays, I think taxonomy is is kind of a well-known concept. Yeah. Um, back then it wasn't. Um, so, you know, my, my, my career path was like 16, 17 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And I remember like Googling, right? Like, what is a taxonomy? Because I had a library background. Um, yeah. I was more on the technical side. Um, I knew a lot about, um, you know, getting machines and search engines to do what you needed them to do, but I didn't really know the the art of tagging things that that made sense for for all of that. I came across a book called The Accidental Taxonomist. I had no idea who Heather was at the time, right? And Heather, I don't even know if you know this story, um, but that that was my first career job, and my boss, she's like, okay, we're training you to be this this taxonomist. Um, there's this thing called taxonomy boot camp. You should go. And so I went and you had one of the um, workshops before the conference. And I went to one uh -huh. and I took your class. And I think I'm almost positive you signed my book at the time. Right. And it was just so funny now, like talking about it, because like, I know you really well, like I really admire what you do. And like, it's just it's so surreal how much of an impact you've had on this whole wow. taxonomy thing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I hope you realize that. I hope you do really. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, there's, there's so many people that I, I talk about, you know, taxonomy and they're like, Oh, have you read the taxonomy book, you know, accidental taxonomy? So I'm like, yep. Yep. <laughs> I think everybody has um, at this point that, that is in the industry. So congratulations, Heather. Thank like, you. that, you've made a really big impact on, on all of this. But, you know, what are some of the things that you think have persisted um, enough that it stayed in, in the newest edition? And what are some of the trends or maybe things that, you know, kind of have come about in the time since the first edition mm -hmm. that have been included in this one? Okay. Um, well, what persists is really best practices mm -hmm. around taxonomy creation and the relationships and wording of the, the labels for the concepts and alternative labels. Uh, because I think there, there are uh, guidelines for thesauri, the ANSI NISO standards. And a thesaurus mm -hmm. is let's say, a little more strict mm -hmm. <laughs> than taxonomy. Yeah. And uh, so there's a question how, how closely you should follow those guidelines or not. Um, they're even called guidelines, not standards. Mm -hmm. And um, then there's, of course, the um, semantic web standards like SCOS, but that's just having to do with uh, the how the data should be expressed so mm -hmm. that it's machine readable and it's consistent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you how to make a good taxonomy. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't realize that. So um, yes, good, good thing to point out here. Yeah. And that, that is a little bit different than ontology guidelines like OWL, which gets much more extensive and there's so much mm -hmm. uh, built into it uh, that with constraints and all that you, you, if you follow it, you build a good ontology, basically, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you're not making things that are kind of wrong. Well, I would say good. I mean, but it's, it, there's well, more. This is the modeling aspect, right? Yeah, like I have yeah. many videos on the channel talking about how, even if you follow those standards with, with ontologies and knowledge graphs, your use case dictates what you need. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And there was always this angle. It's called the accidental taxonomist. It's not just accidental taxonomy. So mm -hmm. there is this focus on, on the role. So I have looked at, uh, you know, job titles and uh, 
job qualifications. And so I, you know, I have, of course, re refresh that with each mm -hmm. edition. I'm, you know, go on to LinkedIn and Indeed and look up a lot of, yeah, uh, you know, job roles involving taxonomies and, and provide some information. What are the skills needed and, mm -hmm. and, and so forth. And then I also have a, a survey of taxonomists that I've done with each, you know, I, I re reissue the survey and get fresh results for the, each edition too. You know, who, who's doing, what is their background? How many years have they been in the field? I mean, mm -hmm. what uh, are they, what issues do they face? And then some of them are open questions too. And so I get a little stories about how people get into the field. And mm -hmm. so that, that's always nice it's to have nice. that fresh information. But um, yeah. Uh, so what's different is, you know, I mentioned the thesaurus standards and my background was, you know, in this library science field a little bit more. So it was the thesaurus standard or guideline that we we're following. And I, I was a little bit more rooted in that initially. So the first edition really explains taxonomy is kind of based on, on thesauri, mm -hmm. uh, which is focused on terms, not concepts. They mm -hmm. even talk about non-preferred terms and preferred terms instead of different labels for the same concept. Mm -hmm. And the second edition, I, I then introduced Scott. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even mention it in the first edition. But I'm still giving examples a little bit too much based on the thesaurus model. So for mm -hmm. the by third edition, I've, I've completely gone <laughs> away from, I mean, I mentioned thesauri, but yeah. I mean, when I, I talk about concepts throughout, not terms, and I talk about alternative labels, not non-preferred terms. Yeah. Uh, so I did, that was a, a, a final complete shift. <laughs> right. Uh, and then... Well, I think it's another big difference with the third edition is a whole new chapter on ontologies. Mm -hmm. And that uh, and it's not just because, oh, taxonomists might be interested in ontologies. We see this also with the um, semantic web, the W3C standards and guidelines that include both SCOS, Simple Knowledge Organization System for Taxonomies and Thesauri, mm -hmm. and then OWL, the Web Ontology Language, and mm -hmm. RDF. They bring them to, they, they share the same standards, taxonomies mm -hmm. and ontologies, so they connect and they, uh, you know, extend, you basically you can extend a taxonomy into an ontology. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're seeing a lot more integrated taxonomies and ontologies being built, tools support that, and even crossover of skills. So, you know, there are taxonomists who now are doing ontologies mm -hmm. and people who maybe started with ontologists getting interested in taxonomies, where mm -hmm. they started out as more separate, they mm -hmm. had different origins. Yeah. And, you know, that's the interesting thing, too, is first, I really, really hope that, um there is an update to the um, ANSI standards uh, yeah. or recommended practice um, because they're pretty old if you look at them, like the um, ISO 25964 or like the ANSI Z, was it 3919? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're old, you know, and I mean, maybe they're oldies but goodies, right? But, you know, I wish that there were. Um, some updates because the, the world has changed a whole lot since they were yeah uh, yeah the iso one is, is is still it's like 2011 2013 but mm -hmm. it, it does it makes consideration of of scos whereas mm -hmm. the ansi niso z39.19 um yeah guidelines for monolingual control yeah. vocabularies you can tell <laughs> we do this a lot we know them off the top <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it what goes back to maybe 2005, and there was like mm -hmm. reaffirmed in, in 2010, but that was only reaffirmed. They didn't like really yeah. do it. They said, "Yeah, it's okay." You know, so mm -hmm. it it's behind in in the timeline of NISO, the National Information Standards Organization. They don't let them go that long without being revised. Usually, yeah. this has gone longer than normal, mm -hmm. uh, and um. Well, I have let them know that I would be interested in being on the working group. I would be up. too. Just yes. they do that. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I was involved with it, something else that was um, uh, it just a, a kind of working. I mean, it was a, a report. It wasn't a real standard. And I was initially going to be involved with the index standard, but because my employment changed and I wasn't mm -hmm. really involved with indexing, it didn't make sense. So I didn't yeah. continue with that. Yeah. And, and that's the other thing, like there's, 
Um, you know, and that's why I'm sure there'll be an edition four at some point for you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> really? You're like, oh, I don't know if I can handle that. But like, yeah. you know, RDF is a good example. Like, you know, I don't know how much of that is covered in the book, but like they just are finally getting a draft of RDF star and, you know, some mm -hmm. of those other standards getting outdated. And, you know, I think it's the, the, the understanding of how taxonomies are used in a lot of the newer, newer technologies um, that a lot of people are talking about now. Right. So, yeah. you know, neural techniques like LLMs and things like that, you know, if you, if you are training on a lot of data, like, tons and tons of data to get all those parameters wouldn't it be helpful if you know you could find uh the the resources a little easier you know if they were tagged with a taxonomy not saying you need to do that but you know mm -hmm. just saying like finding things easily and in a standardized way pretty much what taxonomies are really good for they do a lot of other things but those are you know the the core of what i really love about them so heather like what is some of the reception that you've seen from, from the book? Like when you talk to people that have used it, you know, like what, what are some of their stories? What are some of the impacts that, that people have had after reading this? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, that they, it's not necessarily something you read from cover to cover. So it's kind of a, a go-to more like a reference in a certain way, but you know, people have it on their, you know, someone posted a picture of the, <laughs> of the, 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 the go-to books they had on their bookshelf and just like, like four of them. And this is, this is one, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe it's kind of dog-eared. And <laughs> <laughs> I know that some, uh, it is sometimes chapters or parts of it have been used for others who teach courses and, mm -hmm. um, in information science and, and well, yeah, if their courses on, on tax. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, when I was teaching, uh, what was the, I don't even remember, I think it was just called metadata, the the course um, at the University of Pittsburgh, and it was for information science and data science uh, students. And one of the things I, I was teaching is, well, you know, taxonomies, and here's how they're useful. And your your book was on the list. Yeah. <laughs> so. And, you know, I come in, across a lot of people um whether it's in conferences I go to or um, through my, I have through my work. Now I'm, I'm working for a vendor in, in this space, a uh, semantic web company vendor pool party. And so I've sometimes been on pre-sales calls. And then, so someone I don't know at all on the other end said, oh yeah, I have your book or I read your book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's out there and that's nice to hear. Well, you have certainly created a legacy um, with this, Heather. So again, congratulations on the book. And, mm -hmm. you know, in, in parting words, um, you know, what what would your advice be for anybody that is thinking about picking this book up? Um, what would be your advice on whether they should or not? You know, you, you, you have some either professional interest because you've started in some other information or knowledge management related field and you want to know what's related, it's connected. It's really connected to so much, and <laughs> which has made it kind of interesting. I don't fit into just one community. You know, sometimes it's a content strategists and knowledge managers and information architects, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, and then ontologists and knowledge graph experts and everybody. Um, so, or, or have some kind of use case in mind. So as I said, either a personal professional interest or, or a use case in mind is, is, is helpful. I do want to say still are the parting words. I'm not planning on a fourth edition, but if there are new ideas, I write them in my blog. So I have a blog. Oh, that's a good the tip. Right. The Accidental Taxonomist, mm -hmm. where I post something every month. And uh, as new trends and new issues come up, I will add something there. The last post was taxonomies and chat GPT. Yeah. And I'll put the, some of these links uh, okay. down below so folks can just click on them and go and check it out.